The eastern side of South Baranoff Wilderness Area is known as the Waterfall Coast because of its steep topography, steady snow melt, and usually rainy weather. In late June, the SES team headed out to this coast to conduct solitude monitoring and rare and invasive plant surveys. For this expedition, Kitty Matt and I teamed up with Alaskan nature writer Nick Jans and wildlife biologist and boat captain Ken Merrill. We packed all five of us, loads of gear, and one giant dog on Ken's 42-foot sailboat and headed down the coast. This is the ultramafic outcrop of Red Bluff Bay, gives the bay its name. You can see the Red Bluffs. In the grand scheme of things, why are these, why are the geologic anomalies important or interesting to be looking at? Well, they're interesting just to see what it tells us about plant distribution and, and plant tolerances. It is just as important to look at the, the normal spots in between. Um, but in southeast with the geology so mixed up, what's normal? And there's 30 ultramafic sites in um, southeast Alaska, and only one in wilderness. Actually, several have commercial properties on them, so this is, this is unique. While Kitty and Matt collected plant samples, Nick Jans and I discussed the importance and future of wilderness in Alaska. You have to, wilderness has to have people in it. Uh, at least has to have them appreciate it and want it to be there or won't be there. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what to do about that. Uh, so, I, I guess if I could say one thing about it is that I'm, I'm not writing a polemic uh, where I'm preaching to a choir, you know, and ranting about something. I want to write something that explains where we are and gives some thoughtful ideas of where we're going and what we can do that makes sense. Is really what I'm, I'm, I want to write about is, are all the vectors of change that are converging uh, on this last best place that we have. And in the 30 years I've been here, which is nothing. I mean, I'm not some old timer. I've got no grandfather rights or anything. You know, I have seen it enough change within the 30 years I've been here to give me pause and think about where it is we're going. Oh, oh, just had one. Dang it. <laughs> That's where multitasking gets you. <laughs> And throughout the trip, I recorded the number, type, and distance of any motorized vehicle, as well as any other signs of humans or human use. Surprisingly, we didn't see many other people, only a few boats in the bays, and no other people on shore. South Baranoff Wilderness Area truly is a wild place. As we collected data in these remote glacial fjords, I felt sincerely thankful to the conservationists of the past who protected this place and kept it pristine for folks like us. Without their efforts, and without our continued efforts to preserve wilderness character, these opportunities would not exist. To learn more about the Sitka Community Wilderness Stewardship Project, and to find out how you can support the project and others like it, visit the Sitka Conservation Society's webpage at www.sitkawild.org. To see more trip reports, track the wilderness crew in action, or learn more about the South Baranoff and West Chichigoff wilderness areas, check out my wilderness stewardship blog at sitkawild.org slash wilderness. If that's the way it is, then that's the way it is. I should feel the taste of